Hi, my name is Lucas Price and today we're going to make a sopa de lima. It's a chicken soup, a Mexican chicken soup made with caramelized onions, roasted tomatoes, poblano chilies, and finished with lime juice. So I made this soup for my wife Camille when we first got together before we were married and she liked it a lot, so much possibly that she married me. <laughs> now we're going to prep this onion. This is a great way to um, prep to skin an onion and to get it ready to slice or to dice depending on where you're going. So you saw I cut the ends off first. Now I'm cutting it down the middle here and then I'm going to peel off the outside skin. Now we are slicing these for caramelizing. So we want them long and thin so they have a lot of surface area. And the way the soup is you want long and thin in big chunks. It needs a rustic soup. It's not a refined soup. Let me go ahead and dump this in here for now using some olive oil. So we're going to get these sautéed here and at a certain point we're going to turn this down so that it cooks slow, more slowly. We don't want to burn these. We want to extract the sugars out of this, turn the starches into sugars, and really develop the flavor. So we're going to chop this oregano now. Again, I'm trying to create a lot of surface area so the flavors really penetrate. If I were doing something more for more presentation, like with cilantro or Parsley, I might leave whole leaves, but in this case I'm just going to chop it fine. And sometimes to chop it even finer and to keep it in one place I'll put salt on top of it and chop that into there as well. Generally speaking I put the herbs in towards the end of the cooking process because I don't want them to get too washed out. Oregano is pretty tough though, it's not going to dissipate too much in its flavor. More delicate herbs, parsley, cilantro, you definitely want to put those in right at the end. So here's our onions, still cooking away here. Getting closer. We want them to be a golden, kind of tan golden color. We don't want them to be browned, but we don't want them to be white either. All right. Here's our rich chicken stock. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're grilling the onions. We're roasting the poblano chilies, the tomatoes, and the jalapeno chilies. But the great thing about roasting these tomatoes is that it makes them sweeter. It turns the starches into sugars. So we've got the roasted tomatoes, the jalapenos, the grilled onions here. So we are ready to make our salsa, our salsa asada, which we have at La Cocina de Luz, and if people ask for the milder salsa, that's where we send them, to the roasted tomato salsa. Alright, so you can blender this if you like. We're going to rough chop this because it's better for the visuals. So I'm peeling a little bit of skin off that was um, left on there to hold it all together. And we're just going to take a rough chop this. So for if you have a problem with onions and crying when you're cutting onions, one technique I've heard of is putting a matchstick in your mouth and the sulfur for some reason is supposed to stop the onions from affecting your eyes. Some people put on ski goggles, so I've seen that method, but it shouldn't really bother you too much, I wouldn't think if you're, unless you're cutting a whole lot of onions. Some people like to take the seeds out of these. I don't. I like the flavor of the seeds. But if you want to have the color of the chili without a lot of the heat, you can take these, um, the ribs and the seeds out if you wish. So here goes the jalapenos. Some people rinse their chilies after they roast and peel them. I don't recommend that either because that causes the essential oils to get lost. Because these chilies have a delicate flavor. It's not just all about the heat. The jalapeno chili has a great balance of heat and flavor. As does the poblano chili, which we'll get to in a minute. 
So we're just going to peel these tomatoes just like when you boil a tomato for canning or for making a tomato sauce for Italian cooking. So as you can see, I haven't really been doing a lot of measuring. I think we get a little bit of a, a little bit of leeway when we're cooking savory foods. Now if I was baking, I would definitely be measuring more. But with this, I use a little bit of feeling, a little bit of intuition. All right, one more tomato. And we're just gonna rough chop these and throw them in there, add a little salt, and we'll be good to go. Okay, so we're just gonna... Notice I'm not scraping. And I can turn the knife over too to push the product off the table. Salt. I like to use this kosher salt. Works pretty good. Give it a little spoon here. So here's our salsa here. This is going to be spicy because these, this is a good amount of jalapeno in there. And you can use less jalapeno if you want. But for now, I'm going to throw these chilies in with these onions here. Give those a stir. I'm going to, I want these flavors to marry a little bit while sauteing. I, I think it makes a difference. So let these cook. And then I'm going to also add some garlic to this as well. Just happen to have bunch of garlic here. To save a little bit towards the end, so I have a nice fresh garlic bite at the end. Do some rough chopping here. Now these don't need to be chopped small like the salsa did, because we want the soup to be a little rustic. We want to see these nice big chunks of tomato. I'm basically doing a couple of three cuts across, turning it, doing another three or four across this way. And, and it goes here, and then we're going to put it in the pot. I don't know how it happened, but one day I decided to cut these tortillas this way. I don't know what inspired me, but I did. So I'm going to take a serrated knife, I'm going to roll these tortillas up. I'm going to use about four or five of these things. I'm going to roll it up like this in a tight cylinder. I'm going to take this knife and I'm going to cut it on the bias here like this. You'll see what happens. You end up with this. Lightning bolts. Pretty cool, huh? I showed this to Dean Fearing, cookbook author, executive chef at Manchester Turtle Creek has his own restaurant now, I'm not sure what it's called, but he said, this guy reminds me of another Texan friend of mine, he said, well, we've been trying to figure this out for years, we've tried all different kinds of knives and stuff, and he, he, he was floored that he came to Telluride, Colorado, and learned this from Lucas at La Cocina de Luz. He gave me some good counsel too on my restaurant expansion, so that was a good trade-off. So we're going to take these strips of tortillas here, we're going to fry them up here like this. The important thing with frying chips or frying anything is not to overcrowd the pan. You overcrowd the pan and the oil's not hot enough or the oil gets brought down in temperature, food gets greasy. Yeah, so there's one, there's one there, and they can really get up high on a plate, like this here. They're really fun. I'm going to add, go ahead and add this stock now. This is a chicken stock that we made with chicken bones and lots of vegetable scrap, onion, carrot, celery, tomato, chili, and herb. So it's, it's very rich. When this solidifies, it's like jello. It's very, very, I've um, got a lot of protein in it, a lot of flavor. We're just going to pour this in here like this. I'm going to throw in some of this fresh oregano. So I'll put the chicken in now. Oh boy, Lucas. Chicken in the pot, and it's ready to go. We'll let this warm up here a few minutes. Don't, the thing about some of these soups is you don't want to overcook them. 
Um, you don't want to lose the, the, the texture, the color, the bright flavors, or, or the nutrition. You want to have it um, brought to temperature and served. And the lime always goes right in at the end. It's much fresher that way. If you cook the lime, it gets bitter. Then we'll put the tortilla strips in. A little feta cheese. And then the cilantro. So here we have the sopa de lima, a very simple rustic soup with really great flavor, texture, and who knows, maybe even you'll meet your future spouse this way, serving this soup. So we'll see you again next time. Enjoy.